looks like there's trouble in paradise yet again for um, the head or heads of the Republican Party. I'm talking, of course, about Donald Trump and Mike Pence. Uh, Mike Pence gave a speech recently, and he gave us this little gem. You know, we've all been through a lot over the past year. A global pandemic, civil unrest, a divisive election, and tragedy at our nation's capital. As I said that day, January 6th was a dark day in the history of the United States Capitol. But thanks to the swift action of the Capitol Police and federal law enforcement, violence was quelled. The Capitol was secured. And that same day, we reconvened the Congress and did our duty under the Constitution and the laws of the United States. You know, President Trump and I have spoken many times since we left office. And I don't know if we'll ever see eye to eye on that day. But I will always be proud of what we accomplished for the American people over the last four years. Now, that might not sound like a big deal to President Trump and I may never see eye to eye on that day, but that actually is a big deal. Because in order for that to become pub public in any way, shape, or form, that there was a disagreement on that, there had to be colossal disagreement and anger behind the scenes. And so he's, he's given a little wink and a nod and a hint to the world here, like, yeah, I'm not fucking crazy. I saw what happened. Not only did insane foaming at the mouth, uh, Trump folks stormed the Capitol. They were chanting, hang Mike Pence, and they were searching for him. So, yeah, he probably feels like he barely escaped with his life, or at the very least, barely escaped with, like, without bodily harm. So, clearly, he's like, whoa, what just went on? I was so loyal to Trump, and Trump couldn't unequivocally call off the dogs and say, hey, it's not my fault. Because remember, Trump, leading up to that day, what was he saying? He bought into this insane lunatic right-wing fringe conspiracy theory that Mike Pence somehow has the ability to override the election. He didn't have the ability to override the election. That's utter nonsense, but Trump believed it, and so he blamed Pence when Pence didn't override the election. And so he's hinting here, I'm dealing with a psychopath. Now, then, after that, we get this news about Trump. Trump, too soon to tell if Pence would be running mate if he seeks White House in 2024. Too soon to tell if the guy who is already his running mate would remain his running mate if they run in 2024. Too soon to tell. You know what that means, right? The big man is still angry with Pence because Pence is dissenting because Pence was like, hey, it's kind of fucked up that your people were chanting about killing me. Trouble in paradise. Now, it actually goes a step further. Today, Donald Trump was on Stuart Varney's show, and he said he might have, like, Ron DeSantis as his running mate in 2024. So, in case you were unsure, or you think I'm, you know, making a mountain out of a molehill, and I'm not being totally accurate in what I'm saying here, well, there's further evidence. If you're openly, casually chatting about maybe somebody else being in the running mate, maybe it being Ron DeSantis, then, uh... They did have a falling out. I'm sure they had a falling out. And honestly, it really is amazing because without a doubt, Mike Pence was fiercely loyal to Trump every step of the way. Every step of the way. And um, that wasn't rewarded. And that's actually very... You know, anybody who followed the ins and outs of Trump's career and Trump's life knows that this is what he does. This is what he does. This is his M.O. He'll use you when it suits his own purposes, and then he'll just totally discard you and get rid of you when he feels like he's been slighted in the tiniest way. Like, what was Pence supposed to do? Pretend like they weren't chanting about killing him? Pretend like he wasn't terrified? Pretend like Trump really did make an unequivocal defense of him when he didn't? Tell Trump he was right to say that I, Mike Pence, can overturn the election when that's not accurate? What was he supposed to do? So Pence was super loyal every step of the way, and Trump still stab him in the back and push him out of the way. I mean, I guess that's what you get, you know, when you snuggle up to a man-child who doesn't have any leadership qualities, 
this is what happens. And so, you know, on the one hand, I guess you feel bad for Pence because he was so loyal the whole way. But on the other hand, it's like, this is Donald fucking Trump. Like, you knew what was going to happen, didn't you? You saw it happen with various people in his administration at every step of the way. Now, I wasn't one to really care that much or make the criticism of like, wow, there sure is high turnover in Trump's administration. But there really was high turnover in Trump's administration. And every couple months, he would just purge everybody and be like, you piss me off in this way. You piss me off in that way. You piss me off in this other way. Gone, all of you. So this is what you get. It's amazing, though, that even given the complete and utter disarray of this Republican Party and how terrible they are and how materially they represent nothing, why do you think they talk about cancel culture all the time? Because they're not actually providing an agenda that would help the American people. There's nothing economically or when it comes to foreign policy or whatever that would improve people's lives. So you just talk about wokeness and cancel culture all the time. So they believe in nothing and they're a complete mess and in disarray behind the scenes, but they're still competitive with the Democrats, which says quite a bit about the Democrats, doesn't it? So... It's a total mess through and through, and um, Mike Pence is probably going to cry himself to sleep, and Donald Trump will be searching for the replacement who will be the next person that he eventually stabs in the back.